The Black Death wiped out half of Europe. As many as 50 million people perished as a result of the plague. But it was also a new beginning. The world might look very different today had the plague not set the West on a new course. Supposedly first introduced to Europe during the Siege of Kaffa in 1347, the disease was likely carried by fleas that hitch rides on Genoese ships sailing around the Mediterranean. At the time, no one could have guessed the damage these little fleas would cause. Major population centers like Constantinople, Sicily, and Italy were launching pads for the plague to reach mainland Europe. And once on land, the Black Death likely started spreading from person to person as a type of lung infection. The speed at which the plague spread is almost unfathomable. Just a few years after reaching Kaffa in the Crimea, it had reached every corner of Europe, from Russia to England to Spain. Everyone became acutely aware of the plague's symptoms, swollen lymph nodes, fever, skin sores, then finally death. Estimates are that between 30 to 60% of the population succumbed to the illness. Entire towns and families were wiped out. Mass graves were dug to keep up with a staggering amount of corpses. One Italian chronicler wrote in 1348, Members of a household brought their dead to a ditch as best they could, without priest, without divine offices. Great pits were dug and piled deep with the multitude of dead and they died by the hundreds both day and night. It sounds like hell on earth, or divine punishment, and that's exactly how many interpreted the events. For some, the plague could only be explained as wrath from God for their sins. Others saw it as the end of the world, referencing the book of Revelation where it states, a third of mankind was killed due to the plague. In some ways it was the end of the world, or at least the end of an era, things certainly changed in the aftermath. Some scholars theorize that the Renaissance got its jump start from the Black Death. The plague hit especially hard in Florence and other Italian cities, and it's possible a worldview shift occurred. Familiarity with death caused thinkers to dwell on matters of religion and spirituality. This wave of piety manifested in the widespread sponsorship of religious art, leading to an explosion in painting, sculpting, and architecture. Much of Renaissance art was a contemplation of death and the possibility of new life in Christianity. Scholar Anna Louise de Ormo comments, Some plague art contains gruesome imagery that was directly influenced by the mortality of the plague or by the medieval fascination with the macabre and awareness of death. Other art is of a subject that directly responds to people's reliance on religion to give them hope. A classic artistic motif during and after the plague was the dance macabre, or dance of death, which usually depicted a figure acting as the personification of death, like a specter or a skeleton, milling about amongst the people from all walks of life. It symbolized that death eventually takes all, regardless of social status or wealth. Though the plague's role in the birth of the Renaissance is somewhat speculation, what's more concrete is that it contributed to feudalism's downfall. Prior to the Black Death, most of Europe was composed of fiefs, land owned by lords and the church under the feudal system. But the plague eliminated so much of the population that land became more abundant and food prices fell. Likewise, with fewer workers, craftsmen and artisans could demand more for their labor. Eventually, a middle class emerged as the lower classes could afford better living conditions and clothing as well as luxury items. The power shift did not go unchallenged, however. Once the plague had passed, the improved lot of the serf was resisted by the upper classes. But several uprisings occurred such as the Peasant Revolt in France in 1358, the Guild Revolts of 1378, and the Peasants' Revolt of London in 1381. The efforts of the elite were ultimately futile, as class struggle continued and the leverage that lords had over their peasants was now all but gone. Amongst the turmoil, women's rights improved too. Granted little status before the Black Death, 
women found new opportunities after so many men had perished. Some women were allowed to own their own land, cultivate the businesses formerly run by their husbands or sons, like shipping and textile shops, taverns and farms. Some even joined guilds. Science and medicine were also affected by the plague. Previously, medieval doctors relied on the writings of ancient thinkers like the Roman physician Galen and the Greeks Hippocrates and Aristotle. But as the plague wore on, an accepted remedy seemingly had zero effect on patients. Some recovered while others died for seemingly no reason at all. Doctors began to question these traditional methods. Scholar Joseph Legan writes, Medicine slowly began changing during the generation after the initial outbreak of plague. Many leading medical theoreticians perished in the plague, which opened the discipline to new ideas. A second cause of change was while university-based medicine failed, people began turning to the more practical surgeons. With the rise of surgery, more attention was given to the direct study of the human body, both in sickness and in health. Anatomical investigations and dissections, seldom performed in pre-plague Europe, were pursued more urgently with more support from public authorities. Since so many doctors and medical thinkers perished, a new crop of doctors stepped up which brought new ideas to the table. Tradition no longer dominated medicine, but rather empirical evidence that was proved through experimentation. Additionally, hospitals, often based out of monasteries, developed beyond merely places to isolate sick people. They increased their sanitation standards and became real treatment centers for the ill. The Black Death was one of the most horrific events in Western history, but it led to change that fostered growth in new directions. The cycle of death and rebirth is a recurring theme throughout mankind's history. It's a testament to the human spirit's incredible ability to keep going despite sometimes terrible conditions. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you'd like more. Also, please check out our X account for daily content like this, and consider becoming a member of our channel to support our work. Catch you next time.